Cardiff, the capital of Wales, built on the ruins of an ancient Roman fort. It was once a port for pirates and outcasts. It's Cowbridge Road East. Mm -hmm. It's a busy street. Here it is here too. Yeah. Maureen Crawford, her sister Joan O'Malley, and their brother Ray Donovan are looking for the house where their father was born. Can you see any numbers on that side of the street? It's all 181. 81? Yeah. yeah. Their dad, Ken Donovan, is 87 and too frail to travel from Ottawa. When Ken was a child, his father died and his mother was forced to put him into an orphanage. His children are here to search for Ken's lost relatives and record images from his past. This has to be it, yeah, with the numbers around. Yeah. Yes, you definitely. Know, maybe somebody in here might know something, eh? We'll ask. Okay. Yeah. Ask the caretaker. This might have been the backyard where he played. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, we were wondering if this is 30 Cowbridge. Cowbridge. Right? This is Cowbridge Road. I believe 30 used to be okay. along here. Okay. The houses you're looking for would have been demolished late 60s during the 70s. Mm -hmm. But I believe also, if you out on the front of this building, uh -huh. there's like a plot of ground and an entrance where they're building now. Yes. Uh -huh. right. Well, right on that entrance used to be a florist. Oh. That used to be 30 Cowbridge oh. Road. It's come around. Well, maybe that's a, that was the uh, the stables. The, uh, yeah. It looks like it would be yeah. a, a livery stable. Yeah. That there's looks a wall. quite old. Yeah. yeah. When he entered the orphanage, Ken lost all contact with his family. Yes. yes. Then, at age 15, the British shipped him to Canada. We're, uh, we're from Canada, and uh, we're looking up our father's roots. He used to live here as a child, so we're trying to show him places that he was when he was a child. And uh, he used to live at 30A Cowbridge Road mm -hmm. when he was born. And uh, he remembers... Um, having the, the stables with horses and all that. And I said, could that be one of the buildings that he... he well, it was. It was originally uh, a workhouse. It was, it was a workhouse and they turned it into a hospital. Mm -hmm. So this building has been up uh, here for a long time? Well, a long time, yes. Because I'm talking from time. 1913 to 1920. And this area right here, he, oh. this is where he lived when he uh, was first born. So you're Welsh? Yes, I guess we are. <laughs> you, you, you must realize you're Welsh. Yeah. Well, I guess that's something to be proud of. Oh, certainly. Oh, yes. Certainly. I mean, look at the state of me. Well, yes, you're great. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. You were very okay. helpful. That's all right. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'll, go down I'll, I'll, so we'll go down and I'll shoot the front of that building. Yeah. Yeah, because if you get the front, that's Between 1869 and 1933, a hundred thousand British children were exported to Canada. Many faced rejection when they arrived. These young outcasts were called home children. Dave Lorente is head of Home Children of Canada. His father was also a home child and Ken Donovan's close friend. The child migrants were people who were taken from the streets uh, in some cases. They were taken from uh, broken families. And by broken family, we mean any family in which a parent died. Given the social history of the time, the conditions of the time, there was no social service net, and either the male or the, the female survivor could not look after the children and work. The uh, mandate was to take these people into care in England, look after them for a period of time, and then put them on a ship uh, to Canada. Uh, some children got their birth records, but the, most of them did not. And so they were separated from friends, or they were separated from siblings when they came here. Brothers and sisters were separated. Um, and uh, some of them never found them again. Hello, is this the Donovan residence? We're here from Canada, and we're looking for uh, maybe relatives of my dad's. My dad was a homeboy. Maureen has uh, checked the Cardiff yeah. phone book. I know, I think he, his father had brothers or sisters, but we weren't Looking sure for other Donovans. His father's name was John Patrick Donovan. 
And he died between, we think maybe between 1915 and 19, 20. maybe 20, 1920. Uh, would you know of maybe a relative of yours? My dad had relatives who were Donovan, so his cousins. And my mother also had relatives. Lots of um, Donovans in the family, you know. Mm -hmm. One call connects to Kathy Williams, a longtime resident of Cowbridge Road. And his mother's name was Edith Doricott. Doricott, oh. I've never heard of that name. No? no. Well, this is, this is a picture of her, but that was, uh, you know, probably when she was a bit older. This one here. That one. Oh, yeah. He was born here. So he was born yes. here, right at no. 30, Cowbridge. Well, we just like to know, too, how old Dad was when his mother put him in an orphanage. We like to have pictures, too, because we thought, you know, if we talk to people here, we might find pictures of where he lived. Maybe even, and even a picture of, of him, him or yeah. his parents. That's right, yeah. Do you know what I, you know <clears throat> when he went to Canada? Mm -hmm. He was 14. See, Dad came on a boat with quite a large group. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. oh, there's a picture in here. Here's a picture I'll show you. If this is this is the picture that uh, of the boat. Oh, that's lovely, that is. Mm -hmm. Almost 100,000 came to Canada. Yeah. yeah but you know that... Of the 100,000, some of them must have made very good. Oh, they did. Oh, some of them did, uh -huh. did not. But I think it's the same as they would have done Here. wherever they were. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, they, if it, it was in them to get on, they would get on, no matter where. They, they used their yeah. whole thing. Mrs. Williams couldn't help the Donovans in their search. But Ray and his sisters aren't discouraged. Hopefully, uh, possibly, you know, the house that my dad lived in when he was living before the orphanage. If we can find out some other information, if people can tell us, uh, you know, what it looked like and even the inside, I'd like to know what it looked like too. Uh, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, just to see his roots, some of his roots. I think he feels, so he can see it too. So he can yeah. see it because I think he feels that he doesn't have roots. My mom's family was his family, and um, uh, it would have been nice for him to see. I think. A year ago, Joan wrote the South Wales Echo seeking clues to her father's past. The newspaper published the letter and wrote a story. Reporter Steve Tucker is following up with a new feature. If, if we can get some more details from you today, hopefully we can, we can you know, run the story again. Yes. And um, hopefully get more luck in, in the future. Well, we'd really like to find photos of him, what age he was when he was sent to the orphanage. Yeah. Um, and if we have any relatives, relatives. here, any Donovan, Donovan relatives, relatives as well. I mean, what, what, what would it mean for you to be actually come face to face with a with another Donovan, you know? Oh, I think oh, it would be great. It'd be so I'd touching. Love oh, I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> and he would too. Yeah. He would really like that. It's easy yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. And having, yeah. you know, family, I think that would really mean a lot to him. I have um, a picture in here of his mother. Mm -hmm. And that's his mother again pushing this so, uh, But we don't know where this is. We'd like to know where this so you've picture got all these was pictures, taken. But you don't but know we, where. And we don't know names. She sent oh. pictures and Later said to years. my father, "Well, th these are your cousins," but never put any names on the pictures. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think we should be able to uh, to do something. Okay. Along those lines for you. Okay. So. Okay. You can see why he talked about it all yeah. the time. After a few years in Cardiff, Ken Donovan was moved to another orphanage in Swansea, a seaside town famous for its resort called the Mumbles. Look at that ear! Oh. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, oh my God! Oh yes, I love that. Is excellent. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Dad. Hi, <laughs> Wait till you see the papers we're going to bring home. <laughs> yeah, your picture's in it. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's in the South Wales Echo. Is that right? Yeah, so we'll bring a copy home for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring a couple. Bring a couple? Uh. <laughs> yeah, we th uh, yeah, we thought you were going to say that. <laughs> How many? About uh, 50? <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I wish you were with us. Yeah. Oh, it is absolutely beautiful here. Okay. Yeah. We we walked around the Mumbles for uh, I get I guess three or four hours. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. It is. It's it's amazing. Wait till you see the videos. You won't believe it. Well, this is where he always yeah. talked about going swimming with all the kids, well. and yeah. uh, I wanted to come to see where my father spent uh, a lot of his childhood because he talked about it so often, and we wanted to see what it was like. It seemed like a happy time for yeah. him, the mumbles. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's a, a way of uh, getting away from the problems they did have when they, guess, when they were younger, right? And being trapped in, in a school all day and in, with nuns all the time, it was their way of escaping. Do you know what the orphanage looked like, Dad? Oh, yeah. Did it have a wall around it? Yes. It did? Yeah, a, a, a big, big wall. We used to climb up on the trees. Yeah. And look over. Uh, I remind some of the boys wanted to run away. And uh, I was going to go with them. Can you see anything? Is this a big room? Just a big room? Yeah. I don't know if it's, it's I think it's pretty dark in here, right? Did you take a picture yeah. of that down there? Yeah. See, those things you'll remember, those yeah. little stairwells. That must have been, you know, the shower room, too. Great right, big shower yeah. room, eh? Because yeah. see, you know, the glass is all... Yeah. This must be, you know, like the rooms for the uh, for the nuns, eh? Maybe. It's probably Maybe. all along the way. Well, he'll yeah. be able to tell us when yeah. we show him. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he'll remember that. Yeah. And the, the way the, uh, look at the iron railing up, yes. up there. Keep them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably had a hard time keeping them in. They're ready. Right. you want to swipe that curtain that's hanging? <laughs> <laughs> Can you picture them in the yard here playing yeah. soccer? Yeah. The noise yeah. of the whole yeah. thing? Yeah. Is there a door? Yeah, door here. Yeah, it's boarded up. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, that, I, think I bet you that's what it is. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Everything that he described to us, the walls, the buildings, it's it fits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all coming together. Yeah. <clears throat> it almost brings a tear to your eye. Yeah, <laughs> it feels good though. Yeah. I like yeah. it yeah. because yeah. I know I know he was here. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good feeling. Very touching. Might give some closure to him. Uh, just to see the place. I'm glad we came when we did. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it looks like they're gonna see tear it down. Demolish soon. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels almost like a, a prison when you look at the walls. Wall. Yeah. Probably was to them. Oh way. yeah, it was to them for sure. We used to Sleep on that side. Back in Ottawa, recorded images of the journey encourage Ken to remember. Yeah. There's the front of it. And, and, and that's uh, the nuns used to sleep there. Well, we never got a chance to sleep with the nuns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they never realize what it is, eh? Or to be living in a place like that, eh? Tell them that you didn't have a name. Yeah, they never called you Karen or Greg or anybody. You see, I could be in the backyard, in, in, in the yard, backyard, and I'd say, number 21, McManus, 22, Jimmy McElright, 23, Joe Grady, 25, Eugene Cummings, what number were you? Uh, oh, mine. The 42. 42. Number 42. Yeah. Uh, amazing. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, interesting to you, you know, but it is to me, you know. All the nuns, uh, they had the best, eh? Uh, Freddie Clancy and I. Uh, we'd be uh, waiting till everything was quiet, the nuns were gone, and uh, the whole bit. 
And I say, hey, Fred, let's go down, raid the kitchen. So anyway, we take apples and stuff, and Fred used to tie his pajama leg, and we had to get through a little wicker about that big, you see. So Freddy was getting through, and we got the, 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 the pajama thing came loose, and the apples were going all down the stairs, you know. I had to admit that I raided the kitchen. You don't know what the nun said to me? Put me in a cold bath of water, made me turn the soles of my feet on the edge of the bathtub, and strap the soles of my feet. They wouldn't strap me on the back because it would show. When uh, Sister Remedius came into the class, and says, anybody that wants to go to Canada, stick up your hand. Well, shit, I was, I was, I'm not a big guy. So I stood up on my bench and stuck up my hand. Oh, Christ, I'd go to hell to get the hell out of this orphanage home, you see, you know? And I used to sing a song. There is a happy land far, far away where I'm gonna get bread and jam three times a day. Oh, we'll have a shout when that dirty old man goes out. Oh, we'll have a shout three times a day. <laughs> Ken's family gathers to share memories. And although the people in Ken's past remain in the shadows, the journey has cast new light on his life history. It makes me sad to see what he went through and for him really not to know his mother and father. And it's nice to see him enjoying life. As he, I think he had one hell of a great life. When you think of what he's done and what he's accomplished, and and right from his beginnings to, to what he has today, it's just tremendous. I said to myself, my kids are not going to go through what I went through. And uh, I think they were used pretty fair, I don't, I guess. Of course, too, my wife was a hell of a lovely person, you know. She was a gorgeous woman. And, uh, and you spoiled us rotten. You spoiled us. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Hey, no. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't spoil anybody. <laughs> you see, it's quite an experience for to get on a boat and you don't know where the hell you're going until you get there, you know? How many nights were you here? Just, just, the one night. Just the one, one night. Yeah. One night. Yeah. Well, let's go in when he arrived in Canada, Ken spent one last night in an institution, St. George's Orphanage in Ottawa. We slept in here. Where were the beds on that end or up here? Oh, no, they were all over. All over. How, how many yeah. beds do you yeah. think? Oh, well, that must have been about. Ken's first placements in Canada were disastrous. On one farm, he was forced to sleep in the barn. At another, he was attacked with a pitchfork. But finally, Ken was welcomed at Tom Watts' farm in the Ottawa Valley. He spent 10 happy years there, then went on to a successful career as a civil servant. Has any of this changed? Not at all. Not at all. There are a lot of good uh, memories. He had uh, two girls, and uh, there were three boys, see? Uh, yeah. <laughs> good. 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 Good.
Molly and Agnes grew up with Ken on their father's farm. <laughs> That's Agnes. He knew who she was. Eh? Uh, but she did. Yeah. They're, they're not filming right now, so just... Hiya, Dawn. Hiya. How are you? Good, 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 good. I think good. I saw you the first time around here, uh, around uh, the barn. Uh, you, eh? hey, oh, yeah. 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 Years and years ago. How old was he when you came? What, uh, uh, what were you now? I was about 17? 16, I guess. 16? 16. Yeah. Yeah. Remember right. the first day yeah. he came? <coughs> I do yeah. remember the first day he came. My yeah. father had gone to town in the morning, yeah. and I think he came back with you around noon hour. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was <laughs> work, I guess. Good years. Yeah. They were good years, weren't they, Ken? Oh, hey? yeah, yeah. Those were good years. Yeah, they, they were very, very good. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Tom and I got along very oh, good. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. <laughs> you were like one of the family. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to go back and see where my father was raised and the places where he had seen. And it was like I heard over the years of the Mumbles and Cardiff and all the rest. And, and it was nice to see these places. You know, it puts in your mind what it really looks like. Where before I had, I had no clue what it, what it was like. And it was, it was really interesting to go back and see the orphanage, you know, see the buildings and, you know, put everything, you know, pictures into the, all these mines. And, uh, you know, it's really sad to see and hear of all the things that he went through. There is a happy land far, far away where I'm gonna get bread and jam three times a day. <laughs> 